Hi, welcome to a continuation of an introduction to unconstrained optimization. In particular, in this video, we are going to focus on quadratic functions. The reason for singling out these functions is that they are interesting and uh, important both from a theoretical and a practical viewpoint. Although what we are going to show here will be valid for general and dimensional vector spaces, uh, for the ease of presentation I will restrict myself to two-dimensional vector spaces. So this is how the functions that we are going to investigate look like. Uh, these are functions composed of a, ter of a quadratic term, a linear term and an offset. The quadratic term is characterized by a matrix Q. The linear term is characterized by a vector B. And an offset is uh, just a real number. Now, uh, of course, what we are going to do with this function is that we are going to look for, for such x that minimizes the value of this function. Now, uh, first order necessary conditions. Let's recall that uh, these are given by the requirement that the gradient is vanishing, that the gradient is equal to zero. So we need to calculate the gradient. Of course, you can always proceed in an element-wise way, but if you want to work with directly with vectors and matrices, this is how you can do it. Instead of focusing on the gradient, let's focus on the differential. And recall that the differential is a linear approximation to the increment of the function when the input argument, which we label here dx, changes. And then we will follow the agreement that a gradient is just the transposition of the derivative. Now, uh, when uh, finding differential of a function, we proceed in the same way as we did uh, when, uh, doing deriv when finding derivatives. That means here we had uh, to find a differential of a product, uh, so it composed of two parts. And then uh, on the second row, we can uh, use the fact that the individual terms here are scalar, so why not uh, transposing them? I think you now already, you, you can now guess where we are heading. We would like to express uh, the differential as something times uh, differential, uh, some, something times dx. Now the content of the brackets is the derivative, obviously. It's a row vector and its uh, direct transposition gives us the gradient. So this is how the gradient looks like and in the special and pretty frequent case of symmetric matrices Q, the gradient is just Q times X plus B. Back to the first order necessary conditions, we can uh, say that uh, the, the vector X satisfies the condition of a critical point if it solves the above linear equation. And indeed, uh, we can just uh, formulate this as a, uh, as a linear linear set of uh, linear equations for those of you who are not familiar with matlab this is how we can solve it in matlab using the overloaded backslash uh, symbol now uh, the second order necessary and sufficient conditions are given by the hessian which in this case is uh, matrix Q. So, depending on whether this matrix is positive definite or positive semi-definite or indefinite or singular, we can uh, obtain several scenarios. So, the critical point can classify either as minimum or as maximum or as a settle point or uh, in the situation when uh, at least one of the eigenvalues is a zero, it's a singular point. Now, let's have a look at uh, these by means of an example. So we'll have three scenarios here actually, always described by the matrices Q and B, or matrix Q and the vector B. Now, let's uh, have a look at uh, how the gradients look like, what the critical points are, and in particular, what the Hessian, uh, what the eigenvalues of the Hessian look like. So, in the first case, uh, the eigenvalues of Hessian are both positive, 
which uh, brings us immediately to the conclusion that sufficient conditions of minimality are satisfied. Indeed, the critical point is uh, minimum, which is also confirmed by looking at the contour plot. For the second example, the eigenvalues of the uh, Hessian at the critical point are, one of them is negative, one of them is positive. So what we obtained is a critical point. Again, look at the contour plot. And finally, for the third example, one of the eigenvalues of Hessian is positive, the other one is a zero. This means that along one direction the function looks like uh, being minimized at the critical point, from the other direction it's constant.